Now, if you have a weight oscillating on the end of a spring, back and forth, energy is constantly changing from kinetic to potential. When the spring is at one end, it's potential energy in the spring. When it's part way back, it's gone into kinetic energy with the weight, and then it extends to the other side, it's potential energy in the spring again. But what's happening for energy if you have one of our circuits with a capacitor and an inductor, an LC circuit? Well, it turns out that exactly the same thing is happening. You've got energy moving backwards and forwards. When all the charge is at the capacitor, you have a really strong electric field between the plates. And it turns out that this electric field actually contains energy. A bit of empty space for the strong electric field has energy associated with it. Then as the current flows around the circuit, the charge goes away. And so the rub out the uh, electric field. But at that point, when the electric charge is all gone, you have a really strong magnetic field over here through the inductor. And so that must also have energy. And then as time goes on, the charge flows back over here and we rebuild the electric field here. And the magnetic field disappears in the inductor. So what you're seeing is the energy is going from electric field energy, so a bit of empty space for the electric field has energy, into magnetic field energy. Once again, empty space for the magnetic field has energy. So what we're going to do now is try and work out what the energy of this empty space with an electric or a magnetic field actually is. How are we going to work this out? Well, we can work out, let's have a circuit, something like of a uh, battery going into an inductor. There's going to be a voltage across here and a current into it. And we know that whenever you've got a voltage and a current, there's a power, which is just the current times the voltage. So what we just need to do is work out the sum of the power needed to produce a given magnetic field inside here. And that must have gone into the energy of the magnetic field. So we can compare the two and work out what the energy of a magnetic field actually is. OK, so the total energy in the magnetic field is going to be the sum of all the power times time while that magnetic field is produced. Now, summing over these things is, of course, an integral. So we're integrating from the starting time, which might be when there is zero magnetic field, to the final time, which is when we have a magnetic field whose energy density we're trying to work out. And we just integrate the power, which is I times the voltage, times dt. So what you're saying is, let's say there's a power of 1 watt for 1 second, and then 2 watts for 1 second, and then 5 watts for 1 second. You just add them all up, and that will tell you the total number of watts that have gone in to producing the magnetic field, and that must be the energy in the magnetic field. Now, we know that the voltage across an inductor is its inductance di by dt. So substitute that in. We find that the total energy is the integral from the starting time to the finishing time of L i di by dt dt. Now we can do a calculus trick. Notice we have a dt on the bottom and the top over there. Now, mathematicians hate this, but as physicists, we can just cancel them. So what this does, it ceases to be an integral over time, but becomes an integral over current. So that becomes the integral from the starting current, which we'll choose to be 0, to the final current. L is a constant, so it goes outside of i di. And that's an integral we can do, i di. That just comes out as... L outside, I squared over 2 from I naught to I 1. So if we start at 0, that's just a half L I squared. I, I 1, the, the current at the particular time that we're trying to measure the magnetic field at. 
Okay, so that's how much energy is at a given time. But how does that translate into an energy density of the magnetic field? Well, we know the magnetic field in the solenoid, B, is equal to mu naught n i over d. The solenoid equation that we've used many times. We also know that the inductance for a coil like this is given by the equation mu naught n squared over d times the radius of the coil. So we can substitute those both in over here. What we find is that the energy equals one half mu naught n squared d r. And then we rearrange this to make i the subject, so it's i equals d over b mu naught n. So that gets b d over mu naught n squared, which comes out as one half one over mu naught pi r squared d b squared. Now notice that pi r squared d is just the volume of the inside, the cylinder. So it's got a pi r squared area and length d. So that's just the volume inside. So what that's telling us is the total energy is equal to half 1 over mu naught b squared times the volume. So the energy density in a magnetic field is just 1 over 2 mu naught b squared, magnetic field squared. So just a constant times the square of the magnetic field tells you how much energy there is per unit volume in empty space which has a magnetic field through it.